All right, what's up guys? Dr. Dan over here. We got Brian in the house. Brian is here for his fourth appointment. And Brian came in with some pretty severe neck pain and mid back pain. And what were your original, what was your original issue here? Um, I think I landed on my neck. I was able, unable to turn left and right. I was unable to look up and down. Um, and getting out of bit was really tough. Uh, a lot of pain. A lot of pain. And when you say landed on your neck, what were you doing to land on your neck? <laughs> I was uh, grappling. I trained Jiu Jitsu and uh, I was converting onto my head and I think I landed wrong. And uh, I think that's where the injury came about. Okay. So, super active guy, also does some tennis, right? Yep. Not some tennis, but lots of tennis. Yeah, played college tennis at, at a Division One school. Um, and now I work out here at Wexford coaching younger kids. Nice. So, what, full-time tennis coach? Full-time tennis coach. Good. So, full-time tennis coach, part-time, jiu-jitsu. Do you compete in jiu-jitsu or just do it for fun? Uh, I compete. Uh, I did a couple competitions. I actually have one in another week and a half. So, Dr. Dan over here is helping me out, getting me back into fight uh, ready, uh, comp ready. Good, man. And this competition, I think you said, is New Jersey or something? Uh, actually, I think it's in Pittsburgh. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah. I'm not sure where it is, but somewhere in Pittsburgh. Nice. So, with Brian, uh, he came in here with neck pain, mid-back pain, after an acute injury. Okay, so an acute injury is an injury that occurs after exactly what he said. He got tossed on his head, you know, probably pretty aggressively. He's, you know, grappling and, and fighting with some, you know, one guy, right? And sprains his neck and his mid thoracic spine. So over on this left side is where he had a big kind of like crooked vertebrae in his spine, a ton of muscle spasm and difficulty. I mean, his first appointment I think was about a week or uh, no, about two, two and a half weeks ago, something like that, and couldn't turn his neck left or right. He was in this um, kind of like painful position, this protective position where you were like, boom, like everything was tight. And you're like, I can't turn my head which commonly happens after injury because your body goes into like, hey, let's not hurt anything else, so we're just gonna tighten up, mm -hmm. okay? So on our first couple appointments with Brian, we did some diaphragmatic breathing, which helped to create some core tension, which he's continuing to work on to improve uh, better diaphragm strength, better core strength, which is gonna translate into a looser neck uh, and stronger, uh, stronger musculoskeletal uh, system throughout the upper torso and the lower torso. So diaphragm breathing, really important. We also did a number of lat exercises to help break the cycle of the upper extremity tightness, right? And if you remember, you were kind of like all hunched up. Mm -hmm. And so we gave Brian some simple exercises like a lat press, which he did. And he's been working on setting the shoulders nice and open like this so that he can develop better back chain dominance in the tricep and back in the lat and help to soften up the neck. And he feels, and you guys see on camera, he's got super strong triceps and lats right now and really long, strong, uh, but soft neck muscles, which is really important, okay? So we're gonna continue to do a little myofascial release on his neck. And again, we use a little bit of lotion on the neck to help reduce any of the um, skin tension between my fingers and his neck. We're feeling up in the cervical spine, which he had prior to the injury, some compression up in his cervical spine. Brian feels when we run over uh, some of the upper cervical vertebrae, there is some inflammation in the joint capsules and in the muscles up here, uh, and really just over the joints, over the skeleton of the spine. And when we have neck problem, we're gonna work on the neck, we're gonna work on decompressing or de-stressing the muscles, the ligaments, and the soft tissue structures up in the neck. And then we're gonna get into a neck adjustment, a mid back or thoracic adjustment, and some low back treatment as well. And here in our office, um, Brian came in with you know neck shoulder complaints, but we're still treating his mid and lower back. We're still gonna stretch his legs out because everything's connected. And we want to balance his body out. We don't want his left shoulder to be just the uh, just our primary complaint. We have to understand everything in the body's connected, and so we have to work on the pelvis and the lower back and the legs to ultimately balance out the shoulders and the spine 
and the hips. Okay, hold right there for me. So, a couple of the key points that we always talk about in here. Number one <clears throat> is our shape. We want to develop good shape, and our shape starts with what we're working on now, making sure that we're not rounding the shoulders forward, that we're keeping slight lat engagement to help align the shoulders with the spine. And then Brian's gonna just tuck his head back a little bit like that. And now he's got this beautiful posture, which helps to elevate the neck, reducing tension and strain in the, uh, in the neck and down into the mid back. Look down for me, dude. Look up, look there. Right there. So. Uh, muscle work is very important because the the skeleton is surrounded by soft tissue. Soft tissue meaning muscles, ligaments, connective tissue, and tendons. And little nodules, little knots build up in the muscle, causing restriction of the skeleton, tightness basically. And so in our office we do three things. We do muscle work, we do the adjustments, then we're going to get to some rehab for him to help while he's out of the office to improve his posture and develop strength in the right areas of the body. Look up, look down, and right, and up, and down, and right, and up, and down, and right, and up, and down. And what we're working on here, the scaling area, down, up, down, the lateral neck muscles, the extensor muscles, up and down, good. All right, right there. And then we're gonna hit the levators and upper trap muscles, and then also right around his CT junction, his, when we say CT junction, that means cervicothoracic junction. That's the meeting place between the neck and the mid back and right here in his mid back is where he's got his big um, upper trap strain. Look up straight for me, Brian, and down straight to the ground. And up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down. How's this feel for you, man? Much better. Up. Much better in the first appointment or just much better in, in just in today's appointment? Uh, much better both. Uh, both, right? Up, down. I couldn't look down last time. I couldn't. I'm glad to see my feet again. Glad to see his feet again. He couldn't look down. So what happens when we can't look down or we can't look in any direction, in your spine and all throughout the body you have joints, right? Joints, just like in my fingers, are allowed to move. They're made to move. Look up and down and sometimes if you acutely injure yourself like Brian did where he got slammed down on his head or chronically maybe repetitively poor posture slouching causes muscles to gradually tighten up and it causes your uh, your posture your spine and your skeleton the joints get real tight and if you, as you've seen look up look down in other videos when we talk about the aging process as people age, the body naturally tightens up and it stiffens up. And if you take, look down for me, if you do the right activity, the right stretching, look up, look down. Maybe you get some muscle work done, up. Maybe you get some chiropractic work done throughout your life. You'll keep your body young, healthy, and mobile, look down. But it is a daily process of, of repetition. Repetition means learning how to stretch appropriately. Brian's a really active guy, and so you've taken some of the lap presses pretty good, right? Yeah, I do a lot of that stuff at home. Do a lot of it at home, and you can do them in your car. You can do them, look yeah. up, down. As a, as a tennis coach full-time, right? Mm -hmm. um, as a tennis coach full-time, he we talked about standing on the court with better posture, and I think we showed you how to, like, if you're, if you're coaching, just mm -hmm. hands here and elbows in, a nice little kind mm -hmm. of, like, strong posture like that, mm -hmm. right? So there are a lot of different positions that you can put your body in that are gonna help you or hurt you. One of the postures is just, just like that, right? A little bit of lat engagement. We say use 1% of your available brain power to sit with your shoulders opened. This is open, this would be closed. Gravity repetitively closes the shoulders. 
posture is repetitively closed by texting and computer work. This would be an open, this is what I like to refer to as an open posture, an open shoulder girdle. And a little bit of depression down into the lats so that we can offset any kind of compression, neck tension that develops in the upper extremity. Look straight down for me. Some of the hands-on muscle work, we're gonna zap him with the hypervolt here to again just promote some muscle relaxation, improved circulation into the uh, muscular system and down into the skeletal system, improved movement. We'll find a sticky spot and we'll hold that, that hypervolt right over that sticky spot. Open the shoulder, uh, excuse me, roll them um, forward like that. Open the spine up, we'll say. And then we put his body through a couple different positions so that we can maximally treat the muscles, the ribs, the spine joints back here. He can feel, I can kind of move this. You see how that sticks right there, bro? Yeah. And I like to call these things speed bumps, right? If you're driving your car real fast and <laughs> you hit a speed bump, it kind of disrupts the car, it disrupts you in the car. We have speed bumps in our body. We have muscles that tighten up and they cause congestion, stickiness. And so when we hit his left shoulder right here, he feels that big speed bump of tension that we are working to eliminate, okay? And then this side's a little different, right? Yeah. It's still a little sore around the top of the shoulder blade. And that's so common, again, just overuse of the levator scap and overuse of the, the neck musculature. Good, go head way down. I think those exercises that you give me help a lot. Yes, and we're just at the tip of the iceberg, man. Just get starting to get your lats fired up, okay? Even right here, just press down gently for me and really roll these forward and just try to kind of find exactly where you're at right in there, right? Set those down and then that opens up. That's CT junction. Again, CT junction means cervicothoracic junction. There's a little bit of a, a curve change that occurs here. You have the, uh, the cervical lordosis, which kind of curves back into the thoracic kyphosis. So this is a common place of tension for everybody, man. Um, people get tight around their neck. Ultimately, if, if things get tight enough, then tendons can rip in the shoulder. People that have rotator cuff problems will have CT junction, stiffness, tightness and immobility. And now you can see that's already a little better. You see how that kind of smoothly moves over? Yeah. Now you're doing two things. We're doing two things here. One, he's doing some, some brain to body activation. And if we feel his lats, you see how his lats are all flared out right here? He's setting his shoulders downward, which is pulling tension out of his neck and reestablishing strength in the back. We always want to reestablish strength in the lats, the tricep, that's our back chain. And we want to decompress, we want to de-stress the CT junction, the neck and the shoulder region, okay? Cool. All right, sit up tall. Now, Brian also has previous history of um, college tennis, high school tennis too, right? Yep. Push into my hand here and stop. And so where we're gonna also work with him, push, is, stop, is developing, push, better shoulder mobility and better shoulder strength. Push, stop, push, and stop. Because from high school, college tennis, he's had a little imbalance in his shoulders. Push down, stop, push down, and stop, and push down, and stop, and now that he's a little bit older, still young dude, but a little bit older, but he doesn't want to have future shoulder problems. He doesn't want to have future neck problems. And when we start to train him with our system, our back chain dominant system, our long and soft, but still strong neck, he's going to have more power for his swings out of his, out of his lats and less tension up in the neck, which means less shoulder injury. Okay. All right. Let's go face down on the table for me, dude. All right, when Brian started in here on his first appointment, he had all this neck pain. 
We explained to him the importance of diaphragmatic breathing because he was a chest breather. And now he's doing a great job just in about a week's time frame. He's a, a very active guy. He's implemented the exercises pretty well. Can you take a belly breath in for me? And what we're looking at right here is the expansion exhale out, Brian. The, expan the expansion of this posterior oblique area, deep breath in, and you can see how he's kind of filling out here. Exhale out. You can see all his muscles in his low back if you see right through here. Take belly breath in for me. And you see this expansion of the abdomen and of the oblique muscles. And now today on just again a week or two weeks after his initial point, you feel how you're expanding right here perfectly, man. Exhale out. Inhale in. Hold it in. Exhale out. Okay, so he's doing a great job at diaphragmatic breathing, which is gonna help to take neck tension uh, away, it's gonna help to eliminate. If you're a chest breather and you're breathing up in, neck muscles tighten up. This is stressed breathing. Many people throughout their whole life stress breathe. They breathe deeply into their chest. And one of the first things when we have a neck pain, shoulder pain patient is we start to teach them diaphragmatic breathing, belly breathing. And if you look at some of the other videos on belly breathing, we have a series on how to develop stronger diaphragmatic core, diaphragmatic breathing, which will lead to stronger core, and ultimately softer, smoother muscles throughout the body. Now, Brian has some other injuries that he didn't come in here complaining about, but you feel that thing right in there, Brian. And so again, patients in our clinic here, people that come in to visit us, we start to educate them on whole body health, wellness, and proper exercises to maximize athletic performance, to minimize pain, to improve mobility, to improve power. When we teach Brian, you know, quick, quick little tennis blurb. When you watch tennis on TV, like Serena and Venus Williams, and all these, you know, big time tennis players, they make that sound, right? That. What, do they call it anything or no? Grunt. The grunt. <laughs> the grunt. And what are they doing there? Um, it's actually diaphragm breathing. They're diaphragm. So you guys talked about that in yeah. in tennis? Yeah. And what what is the point of the grunt? Well, it actually helps you release energy and power. I don't know if that's proper, but... Absolutely. It feels that way. feels that way. Energy. You release energy and power. So when you guys watch tennis and you hear those... Uh, you know, I'm just thinking like Venus and Serena because they make that real loud kind of like almost high-pitched yeah. Exhalation big power move when they slam the ball When they hit the ball and they've got it's, a, it's just massive power and energy. So inhaling deep exhaling deep promotes tension in the core and promotes maximum drive Out of the body, right? And so we're you know compressing <laughs> and swinging and throwing. Now what we don't want to do is compress high up in the neck. We want to try to teach people how to get down out of the lats and and that's it, right? Now Brian, I'll tell you man, the more that you practice light swings, okay? Maybe you're just tapping a ball over the net to your to your tennis, you know, your to your uh, trainees or whatever, to your um, to your people that you're working with. Slight inhale, slight exhale out of the belly. Focus on that belly breath as you just Gradually tap that ball over. Should be getting my kids to do it too, actually. Nice, man. It's cool. Cool stuff. Teach them when they're young. Yep. The better we can build patterns and um, and movements when we're young, the longer they carry over later in life, and the more injury-free that we're going to be. Okay. Now I'm going to point something out on Brian, which we haven't worked on yet, but when he lays here. You see how his heels are out and his feet or his heels are in and his toes are out a little bit, okay? And Brian's not in here for low back pain, but Brian is in here to perform better. And as we work on him, we're gonna teach him and he feels, you feel that stuff up here, bro? Okay, so he's got some major tension up in the glute meds and the lateral hip muscles, this is great right here. These hip muscles right out here, the glute meds, right around the SI joints. Um, the upper uh, or like the side portion, the IT bend, those muscles, when they get cranked tight, they start to pull our feet outwards like this. And show them that picture right there. We don't let feet out anything 
in our clinic. When we lift, when we run, when we swing, when we play, we teach people how to get in this more athletic, straightforward stance, which helps the hips, the knees, the feet, the lower back from developing any kind of non-contact injury. Okay, so as we work with Brian, we're gonna start to make him a little more toes in and less toes out. But as he's just laying here in his natural habitat, because he has some muscle tension up here in the hips, that's why his feet are pointing out. So we're gonna hypervolt right around the glute. And again, hypervolt is passive, passive treatment. Meaning that it feels good, it promotes circulation, it improves the health of the muscle and the joint, but it is temporary. So if Brian or any client, if they don't train, if they don't leave here and do some of the glute exercises, which we're gonna work on him on future appointments with, we wanna build stronger hamstrings, stronger lower glutes. To reduce this hip tension up here, we're gonna get him deeper into his squat, ultimately developing more power out of the, the posterior chain of the lower body. And out. And we'll see what these feet look like after we just tap this. These hips. We're gonna do a little hamstring activation. Now here's another key point, if any chiropractors or um, physical therapists are watching this, this uh, video here, my posture is just as important as his posture is. Lots of chiropractors do things with bad form, with less back chain dominance, and ultimately end up hurting their back. So as we work on any of our clients, you see us, myself, Dr. Emily, any of the other chiropractors or assistants that are in here, setting their posture nice and strong so that we can load the glute and the hamstring and take tension out of the lower back. Push and stop. Push. All right, and stop. Just transitioning into some, some other talk here. Push. Stop. Strength is important and so is flexibility, push. So if you're out there lifting too many heavy weights and you're not working on your mobility enough, push. Your flexibility enough, stop. Ultimately your connective tissue gets tight, your tendons get tight, push. And you can end up with stuff like knee pain and back pain, stop, just from exercising. That's non-contact injury, push. And stop. So Brian is a guy who practices some jiu-jitsu, competes in jiu-jitsu. One of the things we're gonna work on with him long-term, look at the difference. Look how easy this hip gets to here. You feel the difference right there? Push into my hand, stop. And we got heel to butt, pretty much no problem. Let's see that right leg again. Now, after we loosened it up already, we've got closer, but see how this still, do you feel how tight up here on the front? Yep. Okay, and when I bend his leg, we see how his hip pops up, okay? Now again, he didn't come in here with low back pain, but again, everything's connected. He did come in here with primary left shoulder pain, right hip is tight, and really what happens is his whole body is just kind of twisted like this right now. Now, part of that can be related to him being a, 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 a one-sided or a more dominant tennis player on one side versus the other side, pushing my hand for me, stop for me. But making apparent that this left, see how easy this is? Push or Easier, stop, push, and stop. And as we work on him, we're gonna get his pelvis balanced so that both right leg and left leg are equal. Okay, deep inhale, brother. Exhale out, shoulders open for me. Good, one more, good. Breath in, and exhale out. Relax that upper body, good. Head here, good, and head over here on the left shoulder, and one more, All right, right there. Let's hit this right side one more time, a little deeper, good. Breath in again, and exhale out. Okay, face over to the window, right side up for me. Remember, people get tight, bottom leg straight, 
top leg bent. Look up towards ceiling for me. Breath in. Exhale out. Pull way out. Good. Other side for me. Oh, this way right over here. Hurts so good. It hurts so good. Stuff's tight. When things get tight, they don't they don't have blood flow, they don't have oxygen, or they have reduced blood flow, reduced oxygen. Adjustments quickly stretch the joint capsules. Breath in, breath out, whole way out. Good, flying your back for me. And we just loosened up his low back. Low back's moving great on the left side, a little less on the right side. Right side's his little bit of tighter side. Okay, Brian, so hip here. We say knee to shoulder is good, right? Feel how free? Knee to sternum gets a little tighter here. Knee to opposite shoulder is real tight, okay? So one of the things we'll work with long term with him is centrating or kind of like balancing out his hip, his femur, which is his ball and socket joint. Bend here. Now remember, this is the, the tighter SI joint. Do you see how much more tension there is here? Yeah. See here? And then we'll kind of like I feel like I try to stretch a lot on the side. It doesn't really make a difference. Doesn't really make a difference. So we got to teach him some focus stretches. Let's just look here. This is knee to chest. Pretty unrestricted, right? I'm free. A little bit more in the sternum and a little bit more tension over in the opposite side. Now what happens here, he's got some front chain dominance. That means quad overuse. He's got some backside imbalance. Hamstring and glute aren't as strong on the backside. On the right is a little weaker. Feel how much more tension here and then way right over here. Okay, so we'll work on his pelvis. Bend your knees in future appointments. Squeeze together for me here. And we're going to start to teach him about lower core strength. You feel how this feels right here? So one of the things we're going to work on down the road, developing better strength in his pelvis and in the lower core. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And it's a little challenging, right? Some muscles that we don't commonly use. Okay, back down. Or focus on. All right, little hand treatment to loosen up the wrist and the fingers. Open this up. Bend your elbow. Stop. Bend and stop. Good. Open hand. Let me hold hand right here. Press into my hand with your fingers. Stop and press and stop. Good. Hand here. Let's take ease right here. And again, this is just a little, a little uh, icing on the on the cake to loosen up the hands. Push fingers into my right there. Stop and push and stop and push and stop. And we're just looking. He's got nice, nice, healthy, long, strong arms. Hands right here. A little baby bit of shoulder roll. Okay. So that simple exercise. Hands here. Shoulders open. If we look at his shoulder placement, if you want to kind of get left versus right, you can see how the right shoulder's a little lower and the left shoulder's a little higher here. Can you feel that? Can you yep. press here, roll this open? You see how that side feels? Can you press here? And you'll see that side's a little more challenging to feel those posterior chain, those backside muscles roll open, okay? So Brian's got an exercise at home. We call it a lat press on the thigh. Press the right, roll the right, hold right there, press the left, roll the left. And you're gonna really focus on that left side because you can see how that side's a little more challenging. Just getting him to develop better postural habits up in the spine, all right? Okay, shoulders down for me, right like that. Now we're gonna do neck adjustment on left and right shoulder down and left shoulder down on that left side or that side left, right there. Okay, now. All right, sit up tall, spin to the right. Lastly, to finish it off today, little A to P shoulder. And again, there we go. What we're doing is just getting his shoulders to sit a little more posteriorly.
Got it, ma'am? One exercise he's gonna work on today, you guys can practice this at home. We're gonna do palms up on the inside of the knees. We're gonna press out into the knees and he's gonna to continue to work on firing up and feeling the tricep engage, the lats engage, and neck depression. You see how that feels? We're gonna hinge at the hips forward. We're gonna roll the shoulders open. Right now, he's pressing his hands out, developing nice strong back chain dominance. About 10 reps, inhale deep, exhale, press out and set. Hold, inhale deep, exhale, press out and hold. Just like this, 10 reps here today, my man. We can work on a little coil where we rotate, focusing on the right hand press out and the right shoulder set down. Now you got nice big right try, right lap. And then left side, inhale deep, exhale deep, press and set. You see how that feels like that? Now this is where we're in a, more, a little more of a thoracic extension position, centered up. Now we're gonna round forward, more forward. And now press the hands out. And now we're gonna work on a little more of the lower lat and the anterior portion of the lat to help open up his CT junction and create a little more flexibility, a little, a little bit more mobility up in the neck region. See how that feels, my man? Yeah. Pretty good stuff, right? Yeah. Okay, that's it today. We're gonna finish up with some deep tissue laser on Brian. Thanks for the, thank you, thanks for the video.